Welcome to my presentation of learning optimal portfolios by leveraging state-of-the-art models for ensemble learning. The problem of allocating wealth across a portfolio of as sets to optimize returns is a central research question in computational finance and machine learning. In addition to the theoretical challenges involved, the practical implementation of a real-world trading system is also challenging. Researchers from various disciplines have extensively studied the field, including finance, statistics and information theory, and machine learning. However, many aspects of the problem remain unresolved. In this project, I propose a novel framework for the problem of building optimal portfolios. My approach is based on ensemble learning of state-of-the-art models, which are separated into two stages, asset selection and allocation. My framework uses several techniques to create a unique ranking system in the asset selection stage. I will combine predictions from CNN on stock charts, LSDM and Temple Fusion Transformer price forecasts, traditional indicators, and FinBERT for the new sentiment. I use the Markovitz Mean Variance Portfolio Optimization Model with a deep learning approach to create a unique ranking score for each asset. In the second stage, the allocation stage with a deep learning approach by learning both the mean return vector, covariance matrix, and gamma jointly. The generated portfolios and their returns will be tested and evaluated against the SP500 index from the period 2022.06.27 to 2022.07.13 with the key objective being to outperform the index in terms of return generated, we test on real-time data to judge the performance of the framework, and guaranteed that no training date it was leaked into the testing set. In the past decade, there has been a growing interest in using deep learning for stock market prediction and investment portfolio optimization. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning that uses artificial neural networks to learn complex patterns in data. Neural networks are similar to the brain in that they are composed of interconnected nodes or neurons that can learn to recognize input data patterns. Deep learning effectively performs various tasks, including image classification, object detection, and natural language processing. Recently, there has been a surge of interest in using deep learning for stock market prediction. Several studies have shown that deep learning can be used to predict stock prices with high accuracy with the current state-of-the-art time series models, such as the temporal fusion transformer. Furthermore, stock selection and portfolio optimization have become increasingly important topics in finance. Several methods have been proposed for selecting stocks and constructing optimal portfolios. But the problem remains challenging due to the many variables involved and the non-stationary nature of the stock market. Ensemble learning is a machine learning technique that can improve the performance of stock selection and portfolio optimization models. Ensemble learning algorithms combine the predictions of multiple models to produce a more accurate prediction than any of the individual models. A recent study showed that an ensemble of deep learning models outperformed a single deep learning model in stock prediction. In this project, I propose a deep learning-based stock selection and portfolio optimization model that uses an ensemble of deep learning models. We train several different deep learning models on historical stock data and use the predictions of these models to construct a ranking of SP500 stocks, with the ranking representing the confidence that the stock will gain value in the next five training days. Subsequently, I train a custom ML version of the traditional Markovitz portfolio allocation model. Finally, we compare the portfolio returns to the SP500 returns over the given trading period. We find that our portfolios outperform the SP500 in terms of both risks and return. The dataset for training the models consists of companies included in the SP500, a stock market index based on the capitalization of 500 large companies listed on either the NYSE or NASDAQ, because the index is widely followed and considered a good representation of the overall performance of the US stock market, it is calculated using a capitalization weighted methodology. This means that the components are weighted according to their market capitalization. The SP500 was first calculated on March 4, 1957, and it typically contains 500 of the most extensive US stocks, which is about 80% of the US equity market. The index is a good representation of the US stock market because it includes many stocks from various sectors. It is also well diversified, which reduces the risk of investing in any particular sector or company. The dataset was collected from the Alpaca Python API. Alpaca offers API for both historical market data access and trading interfaces for automated trading. The data set contains the following features. A. Date this timestamp is converted to NIA standard. B. Open the stock's price at the beginning of the trading day. C. High the highest price of the stock during the trading day. D. Low the lowest price of the stock during the trading day. E. Close the stock's price ends on the trading day. F. Volume, the number of shares of the stock that were traded during the trading day. G. Trade count, this is the unique number of trades for the given time period. 
The target variable is the close price, which is the stock's close price on that day. The frequency in which the data is recorded is daily. Therefore, each row represents the features for a given trading day. The dataset spans 10 years, from 2012-0608 to 2022-0704. Stock chart pattern recognition is complex for many investors because it requires analyzing many data points. However, in technical analysis, many patterns are known to be promising by signals. Such patterns include the head and shoulders, cup and handle, double top or bottom etc. Traders, focusing on technical analysis, look for these patterns to indicate buy or sell signals. The key idea here is that we can train a CNN to perform this task of looking for these patterns and give a buy or sell signal. We generate this data by plotting 30 days of stock and saving it as an image. We essentially have a binary classification problem for the label. One representing that the stock went up in value and zero representing that the stock lost value. This approach leaves us with a few benefits of using CNN models for this task compared to other models. Firstly, the CNN models are well-researched and explainable AI techniques. Secondly, the CNN models can interpret stock graph patterns like a human performing technical analysis. Thirdly, CNN can outperform humans in this task by a couple of percentage points. The model consists of three convolutional and max pooling layers with dropout layers in between to prevent overfitting. The input images are rescaled, so all pixel values are between 0 and 1, and the convolutional layers extract features from the images. The pooling layers reduce the dimensionality of the feature maps, and the dropout layers help to prevent overfitting. Finally, the model has a classification layer that predicts whether an image is a buy or sell signal. For the dataset generation, I used Matplotlib to plot the features open close high low on a chart with dimensions of 53 pixels high and 156 pixels width. The resulting plot was then saved as a JPEG image. I did this to reduce the number of parameters of the model and speed up training time. Furthermore, I used the stock's closing price 5 days in the future as a label. Positive returns are labeled as once and negative returns are labeled as zero. This resulted in a dataset of 26,031 examples. From the figure shows that some stock charts are more promising than others in terms of generating a return. However, it is more challenging to determine which charts are more promising than others. As previously said, the key idea is to look for patterns that signal an upward trend and a trend reversal. Furthermore, on each graph, we can see four lines in color representing the different features we plotted. Finally, we then split 20% of our data into testing set and 80% goes into our training set. The model I mentioned before was built in TensorFlow. I chose this framework because it's optimized for Metal, which gives me GPU acceleration on Mac OS. This lets me train on my integrated AMD Radeon Pro 5500M 8GB graphics card. Overall, the model took about an hour to train. This lets me run several experiments optimizing hyperparameters. The results of the best training run show 3 that the model achieves an accuracy of 68%. This is roughly 12% better than a human 56% at this task. The model was trained using binary cross entropy as its loss function. This provides a continuous range from negative to positive numbers, representing a downturn or upturn. The number corresponds to how confident the model is in its prediction. As the number is continues, we can normalize it and use it directly in the ranking system discussed in the introduction. LSDM models are a type of recurrent neural network that are well suited to time series prediction. This is because they are able to remember long-term dependencies and they have a very strong ability to fight the vanishing gradient problem. LSDMs have been used to great success in a variety of time series prediction tasks, including stock price prediction. In general, they tend to outperform other types of recurrent neural networks as well as traditional time series prediction methods. One of the great advantages of using an LSTM for stock price prediction is that they can be used as a baseline for comparing other predictive models. This is because they provide a very strong baseline performance, which can be difficult to beat. In addition, LSTMs are relatively simple to train and tune, making them a good choice for use as a baseline for our price prediction model. The project's long short-term memory LSTM, model was built in PyTorch. The model consists of 10 LSDM layers with 256 units each, followed by a fully connected dense layer for the regression task. Dropout of 40% is used between each layer to prevent overfitting. Data preparation for training the LSDM. As previously discussed, market data from SP500 companies over the last 10 years is used for analysis. In order to prepare the data for prediction, we first need to normalize prices to be in the range of 0 to 1. Next, this normalization strategy is applied over the entire data set. Subsequently, the data set is split into training and test sets, where the last 60 days are used for testing. Interestingly, you can make a valid point here that the current market conditions do not reflect the overall training set, as we have entered a bear market for the first time in 10 years. 
therefore, we should expect a more significant gap between training and test loss. Next, we apply a moving window to generate X and Y sets. The offset we use to generate labels is 5 days. Therefore, the model is tasked to give in the last 30 days, what will the price be in 5 trading days? Therefore, after applying the moving window, we generated a total of 84,000 examples for the model to learn from. Given the large size of the dataset and the substantial processing power required to train the LSDM, it is not feasible to train the network on laptop hardware. Therefore, a VM with an NVIDIA V100 was selected for training. Furthermore, a relatively large batch size of 256 was used to accelerate the training process. The traditional mean squared error function was used for the loss function due to its proven good performance in regression tasks. In addition, Adam was used as the optimizer for backpropagation during training. The model trained for approximately 36 epoch before the early stopping criteria were met and the training was interrupted. The main goal of the LSDM is to generate buy and sell signals, so the actual price prediction is not as important to us. More important is the model's ability to correctly identify changes and trends. To evaluate the model, I created a simple trading strategy that predicts future values of stocks in the test set and labels every positive value as a buy and every negative value as a sell. Then, I calculated the profit that would have been made by following the model's signals. When looking at the results, we can see that the model is approximately 61% accurate in predicting the trends which leads to an average profit of $12.24. When observing the prediction, we can see that the model is correctly identifying stock trends. However, in some cases, there is a slight lag. Additionally, the scale in terms of stock price is not accurate, meaning the true stock price is not being reflected by a couple percentage points. But nevertheless, due to its capabilities of picking up the trend correctly, it will make a good buy and sell signal for our ensemble model technique. The Temporal Fusion Transformer TFT, is a neural network architecture that integrates the mechanisms of several other neural architectures. For instance, LSDM layers and the attention heads used in transformers. A recent Google AI blog article, Interpretable Deep Learning for Time Series Forecasting, DEC 2021, 6, provides an overview of the Temporal Fusion Transformer. The authors tested the TFT against alternative methods such as Deep AR, ERMA, and LSDM sec 2 sep they ran them on four datasets and tabulated their performance. The TFT outperformed the other models, both the classic methods and the neural networks of different types. 50% and 90% quantile losses were lower by at least 7% than the next best model, the LSDM sec 2 sec networks. An earlier ARCSIV article in late 2020, Temporal Fusion Transformers for Interpretable Multi-Horizon Time Series Forecasting, introduced the TFT concept. The project's long short-term memory LSDM, model was built in PyTorch. The model consists of 10 LSDM layers with 256 units each, followed by a fully connected dense layer for the regression task. Dropout of 40% is used between each layer to prevent overfitting. The basic building blocks of the Temporal Fusion Transformer TFT, model are specialized for finding different aspects or patterns in time series data. These include a temporal multi-head attention block that identifies long-range patterns in the data and prioritizes the most relevant patterns. Each attention head can focus on a different temporal pattern. The model also includes LSDM sequence-to-sequence -sequence encoders slash decoders to summarize shorter patterns. The LSDM blocks are used to identify relationships of time steps with their surrounding values, whereas long-range relationships are left to the attention heads. Finally, the model includes gated residual network blocks GRNs, that weed out unimportant, unused inputs. The GRN can also randomly drop nodes to prevent overfitting. The TFT minimizes a quantile loss function, which enables it to generate a probabilistic forecast. Probabilistic forecasts are useful for predicting stock prices as they provide a range of possible values for the forecast variable, rather than a single point estimate. This can help us to make a risk estimate on each stock as well as the predicted price which we can use as signals whether to buy or sell a stock. The data requires some pre-processing to be able to be used with the TFT. The PyTorch forecasting library takes care of most of the slicing and dicing of the data. However, as the TFT is particularly well suited to a high-dimensional dataset, I decided to add some more information to each time step. This leaves us with the following features. Trade count, VWAP, log close, PCT change RSI fast, RSI slow, RSI ratio, fast MA, slow MA SMA volume ratio, slow MA volume fast, MA volume ATR ratio, ATR slow ATR fast MACD, rock lower band upper band middle band SMA ratio open, high, low, close volume, we need to add a time ID to each time step in a data set, as we have multiple companies represented in the data.
The time ID and company ID are used to generate one sequence. The company ID is also used as a feature to let the model know which company we are currently processing. This should also increase accuracy when predicting for a certain company, as the model will be aware of which company it is currently predicting for as it is injected as a one-hot vector into the model. Hyperparameter Finding and Training OptuNet is an open-source hyperparameter optimization framework that can help find the best performing parameters for a given objective function by balancing exploration and exploitation of the search space. This makes it a good choice for finding the correct type of parameters for the TFT, which is a very computationally expensive model. For the Hyperama to sweep, we use an NVIDIA A100 GPU, allowing us to complete 200 trials in approximately 12 hours. The TFT has six hyperparameters, which greatly influence its performance. After the hyperparameter sweep is complete, we use the optimal hyperparameters for further training. Finally, a training session was started on the NVIDIA A100 GPU server with the optimal hyperparameters. A batch size of 128 was selected, and the training run took approximately 15 hours to complete. When evaluating the model, there are a couple of techniques we can use to look at what the model is predicting and where it's paying its attention. Firstly, let's see if the model is capable of predicting upwards and downwards trends. The model appears to be capable of capturing both upwards and downwards trends fairly reliably. Of particular interest is that the trend is within its high probability region of where the price will be, as indicated by the orange shading. Furthermore, as the attention mechanism is used in TFT, we can use attention rollout to visualize where the model paying its attention on the input time series and features. The model's attention on each time step is clearly illustrated in figure 2. It is interesting to note that the model seems to pay great attention to day 2 in the sequence. As expected, a lot of attention is given to the last day in the sequence before the model has to make its prediction. Furthermore, let us examine which features the model deems important to predict the next closing price. In figure, it can be seen that most of the model's attention is focused on the last closing price, which was to be expected. However, what is not expected is how little attention appears to be given to all other variables. This is particularly surprising given that only 5% of the model's attention is directed towards these variables. This indicates that the model considers most of the information contained in these variables to be noise and not useful for predicting the next closing price. FinBert is a pre-trained NLP model that can analyze the sentiment of the financial text. It is built by training the BERT language model in the finance domain using a large financial corpus. This process fine-tunes the model for financial sentiment classification. The financial phrase Bank by Malo et al. 2014 is used for fine-tuning. Therefore, the FinBERT training procedure is used for fine-tuning the model, which contest of taking the traditional BERT model pre-trained on books Wikipedia etc. Then it is adopted to domain-specific language on financial corpus, of financial news, financial chats and forums, etc. Finally, it is fine-tuned on carefully annotated financial news. The FinBERT results were better than expected, even for those who already believed in the power of pre-trained language models. For example, the testing found that 97% accuracy could be achieved in the whole inter-annotator agreement part of Financial Phrase Bank. This was 6 percentage points higher than the previous state-of-the-art Fin SSLX. The dataset included sentences without a complete inter-annotator agreement. Accuracy was 8-6%, 15% percentage points higher than the previous state-of-the-art HSC. The testing also found that FinBird outperforms other deep learning models, with or without transfer learning. These models include a plain LSTM model with Glovi embeddings, an LSTM model with ELMO embeddings, and ULM fit. A. Simple Moving Average, SMA. The Simple Moving Average, SMA, is a popular indicator used by traders to gauge the direction of a market. The SMA is calculated by taking the average price of a security over a set period of time, usually 20 days. The SMA is a lagging indicator, meaning it is based on past data and therefore is not predictive. However, the SMA can be used to identify trends and support and resistance levels. B. SMA Volume The Simple Moving Average Volume Indicator is a tool used by traders to measure the volume of a security over a specific period of time. This indicator is calculated by taking the sum of the security's volume over the specified period of time and dividing it by the number of periods. The Simple Moving Average Volume Indicator can be used by traders to identify trends in the volume of a security. If the indicator is rising, it may indicate that the security is becoming more popular and is seeing increased trading volume. Conversely, if the indicator is falling, it may indicate that the security is losing popularity and is seeing decreased trading volume. C. The Average True Range Adder The Average True Range Adder is a technical indicator that measures the volatility of a financial instrument. 
ATR is generally used by traders to measure the level of risk associated with a particular trade and to help make decisions about when to enter or exit a trade. The higher the ATR, the higher the level of risk. The lower the ATR, the lower the level of risk. ATR can be used on any time frame, but is most commonly used on daily charts. D. Average Directional Index The Average Directional Index, or X, is a technical indicator used to measure the strength of a trend. The ADX is calculated using a moving average of price range expansion over a given period of time. The indicator can be used to identify whether a market is in a trending or ranging market and to determine the strength of the trend. The ADX is not a momentum indicator but rather a trend strength indicator. E. RSI The RSI is a momentum indicator that measures the speed and change of price movements. The RSI is displayed as an oscillator and ranges from 0 to 100. The indicator is considered overbought when above 70 and oversold when below 30. F. McD. The McD is a technical indicator used for stock trading that shows the relationship between two moving averages of prices. It is calculated by subtracting the 26-day exponential moving average, EMA, from the 12-day EMA. The resulting line is then smoothed by a 9-day EMA, called the signal line. A buy signal is generated when the MACD line crosses above the signal line, and a sell signal is generated when the MACD line crosses below the signal line. G. Rate of change. Rate of change is a technical indicator that measures the speed at which a security's price is changing. It is calculated by taking the difference in price between two periods and dividing it by the length of time between those periods. The resulting number is then multiplied by 100 to get a percentage. We can use indicators to determine if a stock is currently showing potential to go up using traditional indicators. In our case, we create a scoring system judging each indicator and giving it a score of 1 if it shows strong potential, 0.5 it should show somewhat of a potential to go up. We first look at the SMA ratio. If it is above 1, this indicates that the stock is currently on an upward trend. We then copy and normalize the SMS score between 0 and 1 to use for ranking. If the SMA ratio is not above 1, we set the SMS score to zero. Next, we consider the ATX and SMA ratio together. If an ATX five days is greater than 50 and an SMA ratio is greater than one, we assign 0.5 to add score. Otherwise, we assign zero. If ATX 15 days is greater than 50 and SMA ratio is greater than one, we add another 0.5 to the idiot score for a total of one. The RSI score is made up of two parts, the RSI five days and the RSI 15 days. If the RSI 5 is greater than 30, the RSI score is set to 0.5. If the RSI 15 is greater than 30, another 0.5 is added to the RSI score. We finally consider the MACD. If the MACD is greater than 0, the MACD score is set to 1. Otherwise, it stays at 0. We now have 12 predictions that have been normalized between 0 and 1. We can take the average of these predictions, as they were all generated from either machine learning or linear models. This process is also known as ensemble learning and it combines the predictions of multiple models to create a more accurate prediction. However, taking the average is not the only technique we can pursue of combining the scores, we could also use a weighted average with each weight being associated to the accuracy of each individual model. Extending on this idea, you could train a single layer fully connected network to learn the optimal weightings of each score for you. However, due to the reasons of time in this report, we'll focus on taking the simple average out of all scores as the scoring metric. Therefore, we have the following scores to consider. 1. Prediction normalized, prediction score from the graph. Classific CNN. 2. Forecaster prediction normalized, estimated return from. LSDM. 3. SMA, traditional indicator simple moving average score. 4. X, traditional indicator average directional index. Score. 5. RSI, traditional indicator RSI score. 6. MACD traditional indicator MACD score. 7. Compound norm, compound sentiment score from FIN. BERT. 8. Positive sentiment normalized, positive sentiment score. From FIN BERT to furthermore reinforce positive sentiment on the final score. 9. FTF estimated return normalized, estimated return from. TFT. 10. FTF max return normalized, maximum estimated return. From TFT. 11. FTF min return normalized, minimum estimated return. From TFT. 12. FTF risk gain normalized, the estimated risk slash gain from TFT. Finally, after all the scores are computed, we sort all companies in the SP500 by their respective score in descending order and select the top end for portfolio optimization.
The Markowitz model was put forward by Harry Markowitz in 1952 for portfolio optimization as a mathematical model used to determine the optimal investment portfolio. The model is based on the concept of mean variance optimization, which is a method of choosing the best investment portfolio based on the expected return and the variance of the return. The Markowitz model takes into account the risk aversion of the investor and the correlation between the assets in the portfolio. The model can be used to optimize a portfolio for a single period or for multiple periods. The most efficient portfolios are those that offer the highest return for a given level of risk or the lowest level of risk for a given return. Investors typically choose portfolios based on one of these two criteria. A. From the portfolios that have the same return, the investor will prefer the portfolio with lower risk. B. From the portfolios that have the same risk level, an investor will prefer the portfolio with higher rate of return. As investors are rational, they seek to maximize return while minimizing risk. The efficient frontier is the boundary of all possible securities an investor can invest in, and all portfolios that lie on this boundary are considered efficient portfolios. For example, at risk level X2, there are three. Portfolios S, T, and U. However, Portfolio S is considered the most efficient portfolio as it has the highest return, Y2, compared to T and U. All portfolios that lie on the boundary of the efficient frontier are efficient portfolios for a given risk level. Portfolios below the efficient frontier are not good enough because the return would be lower for the given risk. Portfolios that lie to the right of the efficient frontier would not be good enough, as there is a higher risk for a given rate of return. The efficient frontier is the same for all investors, as all investors want maximum return with the lowest possible risk and are risk averse. The Deep Doe framework focuses on portfolio optimization through deep learning. Its goal is to make it easier to research networks that can allocate weights in one forward pass, making it ideal for our use case of portfolio optimization. Furthermore, the framework offered a special kind of layer called the numerical Markowitz. Numerical Markowitz is a convex optimization solver that is built on top of CVX bilayers. As we want to build a network with no input features, but multiple learnable parameters that determine the result of a forward pass, we'll use the numerical Markowitz layer for this. The numerical Markowitz layer has three inputs, the covariance matrix, mean return vector, and gamma. Our goal is to build a network called allocator net and learn a mean return vector, covariance matrix, and gamma from scratch given the Y labels. The problem can be defined as we can see in the equation. As we want to build a network with no input features, but multiple learnable parameters that determine the result of a forward pass, we'll use the numerical Markowitz layer for this. The numerical Markowitz layer has three inputs, the covariance matrix, mean return vector, and gamma. Our goal is to build a network called allocator net and learn a mean return vector, covariance matrix, and gamma from scratch given the Y labels. We now need to prepare the data so we can use it for the allocator net model in Deepto. For a specific example, one can investigate the daily open price returns, close price returns, and volumes of multiple Nasdaq stocks. Graphically, one can imagine the tensor arrangement as shown in the left figure. The tensor has the shape, n channels, n time steps, n assets, equals 3, 10, 6. If we fix a time step, representing now, we can split our tensor into three disjoint subtensors. 1, x, n channels, look back, n assets, equals 3, 5, 6, 2, g, n channels, gap, n assets, equals 3, 1, 6. 3, y, n channels, horizon, n assets, equals 3, 4, 6. This arrangement can be also seen in the right figure. X represents all the knowledge about the past and present, while the second tensor G represents information contained in the immediate future that we cannot use to make investment decisions. Finally, Y is the future evolution of the market, which in our case we'll use for training with X and G not being used, nevertheless they have to be present in a data set for the deep dough framework to work correctly. We can now compare the allocator net to the more traditional Markowitz model, where we have knowledge of the covariance matrix and future returns. It's important to note that we have to train allocator net on each portfolio independently. However, training the model only takes around 60 seconds, so it's fairly quick and can be easily done. Firstly, let's have a look at the covariance matrix of the selected portfolio. We now see the mean and covmet as the ground truth parameters that fully determine the market dynamics. We will now generate some samples from a multivariate normal distribution using mean returns and covariance matrix as the defining parameters. The ground truth mean and covmet can be used to find the optimal weight allocation for a given objective and constraints. This will result in a convex optimization problem, which has a unique solution. We can use CVXBY to find the solution numerically. We will refer to this type of optimization problem as a Markowitz optimization problem. 
We will be looking at the following objectives, maximum return, minimum variance, and maximum utility. In figure, we can see the traditional Markowitz model does a great job in determining the optimal portfolio allocations as we can see the generated portfolios are very close to the ground truth. We now want to train allocator net to perform the optimal portfolio allocations. The main feature of Deepdo is that it only cares about the final allocation that minimizes some function of empirical portfolio returns. Unlike the sample estimators in the previous sections, one does not need to explicitly model the market dynamics and find allocation via the two-step procedure. Below we define empirical counterparts of the convex optimization objectives, losses. Note that all losses in Deepdo have the lower, the better logic. The following losses were selected to both maximize the return and minimize the standard deviation. We now want to train allocator net to perform the optimal portfolio allocations. The main feature of Deepdo is that it only cares about the final allocation that minimizes some function of empirical portfolio returns. Unlike the sample estimators in the previous sections, one does not need to explicitly model the market dynamics and find allocation via the two-step procedure. Below we define empirical counterparts of the convex optimization objectives, losses. Note that all losses in Deepdo have the lower, the better logic. The following losses were selected to both maximize the return and minimize the standard deviation. We can compare the ground truth, the imperial estimates, and allocator net portfolios after training. All three were good at estimating the optimal portfolio, but allocator net was particularly good at capturing both the current matrix and mean return vector from previously observed closing prices without needing any additional information. Furthermore, allocator net outperforms all commonly used baselines by a significant margin as can be seen in the left figure. Currently, I still see room for further improvements. Allocator net does not take into consideration any current market developments as the X input vector is entirely ignored. However, it might be worthwhile to validate how to integrate X into the Markovitz model to make adaption to current market conditions, as the Markovitz model approach may not be ideal for high volatility markets as can be observed currently. The performance of the generated portfolios can be evaluated in several ways. In this report, I have selected to compare the portfolio performance against the S and P500 index. Although the S and P500 index does not necessarily represent a basket of stocks that are representative of the entire US equity market, it is still a good benchmark for comparing the performance of stock portfolios. Firstly, let's look at some evaluation on real-time data. The valuation period was from 2022-06-24 to 2022-07-01, which means all assets were purchased on 2022-06-24 at market open and subsequently sold on 2022-07-01 market close. When comparing the performance of the portfolio to the S and P500, we can see that the portfolio outperforms the S and P500 by 0.588%. The total return of the S and P500 in the time period was minus 2.209%, while the generated portfolio only lost about minus 1.621%. It is important to note that there are no short positions in the portfolio, so if the market overall declines, we expect to see the same in our portfolio, just not to the same extent. The portfolio outperformed the S and P500 significantly until the 28th of June 2022, which is the day the United States Federal Reserve increased its interest rates. This typically makes capital expensive, which is terrible for the stock market. When the Federal Reserve increases interest rates, it becomes more expensive for companies to borrow money. This can lead to a decrease in stock prices as investors may believe that companies will have a more challenging time making profits. Additionally, higher interest rates can cause the value of the US dollar to increase, making US stocks less attractive to foreign investors. These factors, together with a large amount of uncertainty in the market and world politics, make predicting the market very difficult even for our ensemble of models. Additionally, as the model is trained on historic data, look-back models may struggle in current market conditions as one of the domain experts who has been giving me feedback during the project has said Andrew Korotkov, Jebson Capital. By logic, I would expect that these should work best in consistent, mean-reverting markets. But the ones we're having today are anything, but things are all over the place. Two-year USD yield, bedrock for a lot of assets pricing, started June at 2.7%, went up to 3.3% on inflation fears, went back down to 2.7% shortly after on recession fears, and then back up to over 3% because of Fed minutes or whatever the explanation one likes. All inside 30 days, which is not normal. Nor is VIX over 20 for the best part of the past two years, nor the high fixed income and equity correlation. 
nor the broken gold, dollar, and rates links, nor the credit spreads in relation to observed defaults etc etc. Same movements are being explained by precisely opposite narratives one day to the next. I think it's fair to say we are in a period of adjustment when it's particularly easy for look-back models to surprise negatively. From the allocation distribution in figure, we can infer that no more than 17.8% of the portfolio was allocated to any individual asset. Furthermore, we can see that the portfolio was well diversified, with different assets, represented, and a divergence in asset returns, as seen in figure 21. This minimized our total loss. To judge effectiveness, it is essential to backtest a portfolio allocation strategy before implementing it. However, due to time constraints, I could only run three additional backtests in addition to the original test. These tests were chosen to represent current market conditions, including downward trends. From the data, we can see that the generated portfolios consistently outperform the S and P500. In conclusion, it has been shown that building optimal portfolios with ensemble learning is successful. It has been shown to build robust, low-risk, high-return portfolios that outperform the S and P500, allowing higher returns and lower losses for a given risk level. Nevertheless, it was also seen that positive returns on a downwards trending market are still difficult for the strategy. Furthermore, due to its buy and hold strategy, it does not update the portfolio when market conditions change. This was visible in the announcement from the Fed and how the portfolio performed after that, rapidly losing value as the market conditions change. One could use a more sophisticated machine learning approach that uses online learning to readjust the portfolio to the current market conditions to improve the strategy. Alternatively, one could use a simulation approach to determine the optimal portfolio for the next trading day instead of the current day. Ensemble methods are a powerful tool in many machine learning applications and have not yet been fully explored in the field of portfolio building. However, as machine learning algorithms continue to develop, the potential of ensemble methods in portfolio building is vast. With the ability to read just portfolios in real time and simulate optimal portfolios for future days, ensemble methods could provide a significant edge in the market.